to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ lord what would you have me to do acts chapter 9 verses 4 through 6 of all the questions asked in the Bible, today we're considering one of, if not the most important question of all, what must a person do to be saved? We welcome you today to our study of cases of conversion in the book of Acts. Today we're considering what Saul of Tarsus did to obey the gospel and become a Christian. And so we're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. We want to encourage you to find your Bible and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God on this matter of salvation. As always, today's lesson is being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ and individual congregations of the Lord's Church uh, in your area. The congregation would love for you, and your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. If you've got a, a Bible question, maybe you'd like to know more about salvation. Maybe you'd like somebody to sit down and study the Word of God with you. Maybe you, you're wondering about worship or some other Bible question. You'll find people at the Lord's Church who would love to sit down and study the Scriptures with you. They're friendly people who love God and who are ultimately concerned about the souls of men and women. Here at the Gospel of Christ, which is an evangelistic work of the Lord's Church, we would also love to help you in your study of the Word of God. Check out our website thegospelofchrist.com. We have lessons on every book of the Bible and a wide variety of topics as well. They're all available free of charge. You can uh, access our video or audio lessons, transcripts, study questions. All that's available to you and it's free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, again, we'd encourage you to go to our website thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can fill out our free media request form. Uh, you can get a digital download or a DVD or CD of that. We'll even send it to you free of charge. We'll pay the postage for that as well. And so any way we can help you, please write to us or call us or contact us. We'd be glad to do that in any way possible. And friend, today, we're thinking about the conversion of one of the premier servants of God, premier workers of God in an evangelistic sense in the first century. The, the man named Saul of Tarsus, who later becomes the Apostle Paul, was at first not friendly at all toward Christianity, but he was converted. And so what happened when Saul was converted that men and women today must do also? Friend, we begin today by realizing that, like all of us, Saul of Tarsus had a sinful past. Paul would say this about himself. In 1 Timothy 1 verse 15, Paul would say, This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, listen to this, of whom I am chief. 1 Timothy 1 verse 13, Paul would say, I thank Christ Jesus who enabled me because he counted me faithful, even though formerly I was injurious and a blasphemer, and he did ungodly things. Saul had a sinful past. Acts chapter 7, he's there holding the coats and agreeing with those who stoned God's servant Stephen to death. Acts chapter 8, he is wreaking havoc on the church. Uh, Acts chapter 9, he's dragged on his way with official letters. He's going to drag men and women to prison. If anybody had a checkered past in sin and a lot of guilt with that, Saul of Tarsus did. And friend, what we realize today, as we think about conversion, is this. Like the proverbial woman at the well, every one of us has a sinful past. Just like Saul, just like other people in the Bible, I can say and you can say, if you're of an accountable age, I've sinned, I've erred exceedingly, 
I've played the fool. 1 Samuel chapter 15. I can say with David in 1 Samuel 12, I've sinned. I need to realize without Christ, I'm separated from God and there is no hope. And so let's read the first little accounting, the first part of Saul's conversion that we have in Acts chapter 9. I want you to look with me in verses 1 through 6. Acts chapter 9, look in verses 1 through 6. Then Saul, still breathing threats and murders against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letters from him to the synagogues of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you're persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the goads. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what would you have me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the city, and it will be told you what you must do. In this initial account, and Paul will recount this twice, once in Acts 21, and, or once in Acts 22, and once in Acts chapter 23, he'll recount this. But in this initial account of Saul's conversion, we learn that Saul had to hear the voice of Christ, right? Here he is, he's intent on... Uh, taking out this heresy, this uh, sect of unbelievers who are following Christ. And so he's got official papers. He's on the road to Damascus. If he finds any who are of that way, he's going to drag them to prison and they're probably going to die there. But the Lord confronts Saul. Saul, Saul, who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. It's hard for you to kick against the goads. Friend, in Saul's conversion, he had to be confronted by Christ and he had to hear the voice or the word of God to be saved. And friend, that's so true today. People have got to come face to face with what they're doing. They've got to come face to face with who Jesus is, and they've got to hear the word of God to be saved. Friend, when we talk about hearing the word of God, that's so essential in salvation. I need to hear God's word about my situation if it's like Paul's. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 The way of the transgressor is hard. Proverbs 15 will say. If I'm living a life of sin, I need to be confronted with that. And I need to realize that continuing in that life is not going to make me happy. It's not going to bring peace. And it's only further separating me from God and salvation. But I also need to hear the voice of Christ as it relates to salvation. You know, the Lord spoke to Saul. And Saul was made available. It was made available, God's plan of salvation, to Saul. We need that same message today. People need to hear. You will call his name Jesus. He'll save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, verses 19 through 21. It's, it's not all gloom and doom. Yes, sin's bad, but it's not all gloom and doom. There is hope in Christ. Men and women can be freed from sin, like Saul of Tarsus, and live a life that has meaning and purpose in Jesus. And so we need to hear God's Word. That means that we need to recognize the authority of God's Word. Friend, do you realize the only thing that matters on the day of salvation is if I've done what this book says, if I follow Jesus? Revelation 12, or Revelation 20, verses 12 through 15. You've got that great judgment scene where the dead, small and great, are standing before God and books were opened. And another book was the book of life, and the dead were judged according to the things written therein. But what was the standard in that judgment? Jesus said, He who rejects me does not receive my word, has that which judges him. What is it, Lord? The word that I've spoken will judge him in the last day. Friend, I need to realize this is the standard. This is the authority. When God speaks, I need to hear it. And friend, I need to be very careful what I listen to. Luke 8, 18, take heed how you hear. Mark 4, 24, take heed what you hear. Mark 9, verse 7, uh, we need the attitude of, speak, Lord, your servant hears. We want to be very careful that we hear the message of Jesus, and we want to separate what men are saying that may or may not be true, may not be true, from what God says. How do we do that? 
with the Word of God. Listen to 1 Thessalonians 5.21. What does it mean to hear God's Word? It means we realize there's a standard and we're going to separate truth from error. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 commands us this. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. 1 John 4 verses 1 through 4 says, Test the spirits to see whether they have God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. We've got to study to show ourselves approved unto God, 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, and to make sure I'm not, be taught, not being taught error. I need to check everything I hear and I'm told and make sure the Word of God's teaching that, not men. Secondly, once Paul had heard the voice, Saul had heard the voice of Jesus, he had to believe in Christ to be saved. That voice came out again. You remember it? Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. Then he said this, Lord, he recognized at this point, and he believed in Jesus after all this had happened, Lord, what would you have me to do? Paul's acknowledgement of Jesus as Lord shows he now believed in Christ, and no doubt he would have to based on what he heard in Saul. Friend, this teaches us in Saul's conversion the importance of believing. I want you to notice John chapter 8, verse 24 with me. In John 8, 24, Jesus said, Unless you believe that I am He, you'll surely die in your sins. You must believe Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, a friend, please don't think that we're saying belief's not essential. The Bible clearly teaches that. Acts 8, when, Saul, when uh, the Ethiopian eunuch, uh, here he is confronted with Jesus, and he sees water in the distance. Hey, here's water. Uh, what hinders me? You remember Acts 8, verse 37? If you believe with all your heart, you may. But friend, hear me well on this also today. Yes. Belief is absolutely essential, but belief alone is not what saves a person. You know, we talked about proving all things. We talked about making sure that what you hear is true to the Word of God. Friend, there are multitudes of people and millions, multitudes of people are teaching this and millions of people have been lied to about it. There's a lot of people who will say, to be saved, all you've got to do is believe in Jesus. That's it, nothing else. Belief alone is what saves. Friend, did you know the only time in my Bible and in yours the words belief or faith alone occurs, God says it will not save? That's right. The only time faith alone or faith only is in the Bible, the Bible teaches alone it won't save. Now let me show you that. Look in your Bible in James chapter 2. And I want you to see what the Scripture says in verse number 24. That's James chapter 2. This is the only occurrence of faith only mentioned in the English Bible. James chapter 2. Look at verse number 24. James says, You see then, by inspiration, the Holy Spirit says, You see then that a man is justified by works, listen to this, and not by faith alone. Are there things we must do? Are we talking about earning our salvation? Of course not. Luke 17, 10, and you, when you've done all those things commanded, you say, I'm an unprofitable servant. But are there works, are there conditions a man must do to be saved? Yeah, the, the belief is even a condition. John 6, 29, Jesus said, this is the work of God that you believe on Him who He sent. And so belief is a work or condition, not that we earn it, but something we must do. And so please understand, the Bible teaches belief alone won't save. You know what the Bible also teaches? And here's a great example of this. We find it in Acts chapter 9. The sinner's prayer is not going to save you either. In fact, you don't ever find that. Here's what you don't find. You don't find what men refer to today as the sinner's prayer anywhere in the Bible. Anywhere. That prayer would go something like this. People will say today, uh, I now encourage you to say this prayer and receive salvation. Dear Lord Jesus, I recognize you as Savior. I ask you to come into my heart and save me right now. You know what? That prayer and that teaching of saying that prayer is nowhere found in the Bible. Not even one time. Here's what you do find. If there were ever an example of a sinner who would a lot of praying and still wasn't saved, it's Saul of Tarsus, isn't it? Saul of Tarsus proves the sinner's prayer is not going to save. Look in Acts chapter 9, verses 11 and 12. 
So the Lord said to Ananias, Arise and go to the street called Straight, inquire at the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus, don't miss this, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he's seen a man named Ananias coming to him, putting his hands on him, so that he may receive his sight. Friend, if there were anybody who'd ever prayed the sinners who were praying, no doubt, Saul was. And yet he wasn't saved at the point of prayer. And so in the Bible we learn that, yes, belief is essential, but belief alone won't save. What else did Saul of Tarsus have to do? No doubt. Saul of Tarsus had to be penitent. That is, he had to repent of the wrong he's doing. Acts 9 verse 6, Lord, what would you have me to do? We open Acts 9 11 and he's there praying. He, reali he now realizes this Jesus and these Christians and, and what I did to Stephen and all this harm I've been doing, that was actually against God's will and I was on the wrong side of it. He no doubt has a mentality of repentance. And friend, to be saved, the Bible clearly teaches you must repent. A person must turn from sin and turn to God. How do we know that? Acts 2.38. On the day of Pentecost when they cried out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Here's that answer. Repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Acts 2 verse 38. Peter preached, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And it was the Lord who said twice in Luke 13, 3 and in Luke 13, 5, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Now, let's think about repentance for just a moment. What exactly is repentance? Repentance is not just being sorry for sin. Is sorrow included in that? No doubt it would be. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10 teaches this. Godly sorrow produces. It is not repentance, but godly sorrow produces repentance. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10. Well, what then is repentance? Matthew 21 verses 28 through 30. Jesus told this story. Father had two sons. He said to his first son, Son, go work in my field today. He said he would, but he never did. He then said to his second son, Son, go work in my field today. He said he wouldn't. He later regretted it and went and worked in the father's field. Jesus said, Which of these two did the will of the father? Well, naturally, they said the second. What did the second do? He said he wouldn't. He regretted it, there's the sorrow, and then he changed his way of thinking and acting. He went and worked in the Father's field. And so what is repentance? Change, way, change will that leads to a change way, or maybe easier to remember, a change way of thinking that leads to a change way of acting. Are we saying that if you sin after you obey the gospel that you haven't repented? That's not the idea. We all from time to time sin because temptation gets in our life and we give in to it. But repentance means I know that's wrong and I'm trying my best every day to do what God wants me to do. Do I mess up? Sure. But I want to try to do better all the time. And then of course, to be saved, not only did Paul have to hear the Word, believe in Jesus, acknowledge Him, uh, repent in his life, but he also had to confess Jesus as Lord. Listen again to Acts 9 verses 5 through 6. Uh, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. Lord, there it is. Saul acknowledged, Lord, what would you have me to do? And friend, to be saved, the Bible teaches a person must confess Jesus as the Son of God. Let's use the example of the Ethiopian eunuch. He looks up in the chariot. Out in the distance, he sees a body of water. Man, Philip's been talking about it. He's told me how to get into Christ. Here's water, what hinders me from being baptized? If you believe with all your heart, you may. And then he said it. I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Romans 10 verse 10, With the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And so yes, my friend, you must, you must confess Jesus to be saved. But is this all you have to do? And more importantly, is this all Saul of Tarsus did? No, it's not. And let's get the rest of the story. Paul now recounts his own conversion in Acts 22. And so I want to ask you to open your Bible to Acts chapter 22 with me. Remembering the question of Saul 
In Acts chapter 9, verse 6, Lord, what would you have me to do? And God's answer was, you go into the city and it'll be told you what you must do. And so now God summons a servant named Ananias. That servant is going to go to Saul and tell him what he must do. Well, let's find out what that must was. Look at Acts 22. Ananias comes to Saul, and here's what he says. Acts 22, 16. And now, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. What did Saul of Tarsus, what was that must, that essential thing Saul of Tarsus had to do to be forgiven of sin? My friend, it's very simple. Ananias says, Saul, Saul, what are you waiting on? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins calling on the name of the Lord. Now friend, there are several really important truths that we want to point out here. As you think about this idea, friend, from this passage, we can learn the exact moment in time a person is saved. Think about these verses with me. The Bible teaches it's sin that separates us from God and causes us to be lost, right? Romans 3.23, all of sin falls short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Uh, Ezekiel 18, 4, the soul who sins will surely die. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 teaches us that that's the barrier. Sin is the barrier separating God from man. The Lord's ear is not heavy that it cannot hear. His arms not short that it cannot say. But listen to this now. Here's man and God. Your sins and your iniquities have separated you from your God so that he will not hear. And so we learn in the Bible, sin is what separates us from God, right? Whenever that sin is removed, that's when I'm back in a right relationship with God and saved, correct? When is sin removed? Listen to Acts 22, 16 again. Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. Listen to this. Washing away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Now someone says, well, why in the world is baptism that point where that happens? Well, number one, that's what God said, and that's all that matters. But secondly, we learn baptism is actually the point in time. You know, we teach and we believe, as the Bible does, the death of Jesus saves, right? Without Jesus, there's no salvation. The blood of Jesus saves. Matthew 26, 28, this is my blood of the new covenant shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so the death, the sacrifice, and the blood of Jesus saves. There's no doubt about that. Did you know the point that I contact Jesus' death and blood is in the culminating act of baptism? That's what the Bible teaches. Let me show you. Look in your Bible in Romans chapter 6. I want you to see for yourself that the scriptures teach I contact Jesus' death, His blood, and His saving sacrifice in the culminating act of baptism. Look in Romans 6, verses 3 and 4. The Bible says, Or do you not know, watch this, that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, here it is, were baptized into His death. Therefore we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Friend, we say and we teach Jesus' death saves, His blood saves, and, and absolutely right. But friend, the Bible teaches us where so many people miss it. The Bible teaches and we just saw it for ourselves. We contact Jesus' death in the point of baptism. That's why there's so many passages that teach baptism's essential. Listen to Mark 16, 16. Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Jesus said, if you don't believe you can't, or you're not baptized, you can't get in the kingdom. Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he can't get in the kingdom of God. Peter said, baptism does now also save us. Galatians 3, 27, as many of us as were baptized into Christ, have clothed ourselves with Christ over and over again. 
every account of conversion, we find baptism being an integral part of those people's conversion. And so, friend, as we've thought about Saul of Tarsus today, let's now shift our thinking to think about ourselves. Friend, we want to ask you today, have you recognized what a sinful life will do to you? Saul said, and maybe you feel like Saul sometimes, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I'm chief. Do you ever feel like that? Do you ever feel like the burden and the weight and the guilt and the heartbreak of sin is too much? Friend, if so, we've got good news for you today. You can have every sin removed and forgotten. Hebrews 8, verse 12 and 13, God says, I'll be merciful to their sins, their lawless deeds I'll remember no more. Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant for the remission of sins. Your sins can be forgiven. You can start over today. We say, how do I do that? Just like Saul of Tarsus. Have you heard the message about Jesus? Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Jesus said, unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. John 8, verse 24. Are you willing not only just believe in Jesus uh, or to hear God's Word, but would you believe that He's the way, the truth, and the life? And having believed that, would you be willing to turn from a life of sin? Remember the Lord said in Luke 13, 5, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Friend, would you do your best every day to, to make up your mind, I'm going to follow God's will and His way, and I'm going to do my best to avoid sin at all costs? Would you do that? Would you make the good confession? Jesus is Lord and Christ. Remember, Jesus said, If you won't confess me before men, neither will I confess you before my Father who is in heaven. And will you do what was essential for Saul to do, to be saved? Go in the city. It will be told you what you must do, God said to Saul. Ananias comes to him, Acts twenty two sixteen. Here he is. Saul, Saul, why are you waiting? Get up and be baptized. Wash away your sins calling on the name of the Lord. Friend, if you haven't done that, why not? We encourage you today to do that. If, if we can help you in a way, we want to do that, and we encourage you to join us next time as we study another case of conversion in the book of Acts. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the